Well, hey guys, welcome back to a very special Halloween special. Now, I don't know if you've heard this folklore around the modeling circles, but I hear every Halloween, the great pumpkin rises from the pumpkin patch. And that's what we have here today. The Atherin SD60M great pumpkin, perfect locomotive for a Halloween special. So how could I resist? We'll also be looking at the Burlington Northern number 1991. Now these MSRP for $289.98, but you can obviously get discounts out there at brick and mortar hobby shops and online retailers. With that said, let's take a look at what you get in this great pumpkin starting next. Pumpkin will rise out of the HO scale pumpkin patch and we'll take a look at it right here with an unboxing. So we're going to start. This is Tsunami 2. If your dealer is nice and they keep everything perfect, then they will give you a Halloween gift of a cardboard protection box to keep shelfware down. There's the end. You can see the locomotive type. For those of you who don't know, the Great Pumpkin is an experimental SD60M when Burlington Northern was experimenting with some different schemes because they were merging or, or had merged with Santa Fe. In the box, you get Ather News Flyer. You get a one-year warranty from Horizon Hobby. And you get a flyer here. And a quick start guide. We will try some of the functions of this Soundtrack Tsunami 2 locomotive. Nothing in the little pouch today. Always like checking the little pouches on Athern locomotives because it's pretty cool. But uh, sometimes you get an extra cab roof on the SD70s, things like that. So you gotta check. But here is the locomotive. We're gonna go ahead and unbox this. Some people love this scheme, some people not so much, but we're going to take a look to see what you get in this locomotive next. All right, I think we're at a decent angle to take a look at some details here. Still haven't found that pointer after all this time, so I guess I'll be using my fat finger to point out some details. Starting in the front, you've got accessory hoses on this SD60M that aren't routed through the snowplow, but they're in the back. You've got an air brake hose that is routed through the front here, McHenry couplers, operating ditch lights, stanchions, very thin, cab nose door with window, separately applied grabs on the cab nose there. Let's see if I can zoom in a little more for you. Never know when this camera is going to go past infinity focus, incandescent bulbs, number boards that are not backlit. You got a firecracker antenna, another, uh, I think it's called a can antenna. Separately applied grabs on the top, sunshades, windshield wipers, you've got a cab interior detail, and you've got the BNSF scheme on the front. And along the side here, you can see the cab interior detail all one color, cab window, sunshade, the four part windows, got the teardrop on the front by the way. Road number 9297's accurate, 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 Ooh, can't get that out, for the actual experimental version, so that is correct, and uh, all the details are correct too. You've got the dustbin hatch, exhaust, blower housing all on the side here. Dynamic brake, exhaust, and fan. You've got a little tread on the walkways, a little hard to pick up. Got a horn mounted right behind the exhaust there. Three radiator fans and the radiator grills on the back. The handrails on this model are impeccably straight, perfect. Very, very thin, yet seem to be somewhat fairly durable. So probably some of the best handrails I've seen on Atherin locomotives so far. In the back, just like the front, I probably forgot to mention the Coupler cut lever, but there's some silver tip 
accessory hoses and the air brake. McHenry coupler again with magnetic glide hand. Incandescent bulbs on the back. Got some nice compartment detail. Brake wheel back here, right there. And more of the same on the other side here. Look at that truck detail, very nice truck detail. Got jacking pads in place, warning labels along the sill there. Just really, really nice detail on that. I know we're not gonna spend much time on this scheme, but boy, is it beautiful. This is the Burlington Northern 1991 pulling for fle freedom scheme. Very beautiful locomotive. And uh, it really deserves its own video because just that beautiful seal on the front of the United States, United States flag, all the other details I mentioned before, uh, just a beautiful scheme though. Uh, you can see the pulling for free freedom on the side uh, with the Burlington Northern scheme. Uh, you've got the Department of Defense seal encircled by stars here. Uh, on the back, you've got 1991, which you can just see there. You've got all the different branches of service seals on each side of the Pulling for Freedom main logo. Just a beautiful locomotive. Um, just never been able to appreciate this. This is the second time it's ran. Uh, and the first time, I never really quite looked at how amazing the scheme is. And then Atherin's Improvement. Of handrails, it appears, uh, just really straight. Um, looks really nice. Burlington Northern written on the side there. Nice compartment detail as well. And then you've got Tsunami 2 to top it off. It's just a really, really nice locomotive. Very eye-catching and very much eye-candy. Right, we're going to apply track power and listen to the startup sequence. We're going to go through some functions here on 3, which is the factory default of the decoder. Headlights, incandescent bulbs are working, and the ditch lights are working. F8 works. Let's listen to some sounds. Bell. Horn. Short horn. Long horn again. F4 dynamic brakes. They're triggered by moving. F5 handle is lighting effects. Same with six, but there's nothing on six. F7 is the demo, which works. F8 is mute, which I already showed earlier. F9 will cut the volume to half with an alternate mixer. F10 is a straight to 8. There's a lot of other sounds, including fuel loading sequence, general service sequence. You've got brake set and release, coupler, uncoupler. I'll go ahead and do the all aboard sound because uh, I haven't heard it in a while. So just cool additional functions like that, all the way up to F28, but not all of them are utilized on this decoder. All right, we're going to move this 
One speed step of 126 on my MRC Prodigy Elite. There's a good crawl at one. There's two, three, four, and five. Also gives you a good chance to see the locomotive along the side there. We'll go backwards in one. Two. Three. Four. And five. Good, smooth speed control from that Genesis Drive and that Tsunami 2 decoder. So there you go, crawling at one speed step. It's very, very nice. All right, we're going to do a pull test with the sounds muted so you can also hear the motor noise. Very, very quiet. The only thing you really hear is the wheels up against the rails. And we've got a 2.8 pull, 2.9 in climbing. Looks like we were going to run around 2.8 to 2.9, which is about 45 cars. Tested the coupler height and wheel sets for the NMRA gauge off screen, and those were both good. Let's take a look at the actual weight now. You're over 1.25 pounds at 1.27. That's one pound, 4.3 ounces, 20.4 ounces, 580 grams, or point. 580 kilograms or 0.575 it kind of fluctuates a little bit but there you go and apparently it's losing weight by the second which is something I wish I could do but those are the side the actual weights you're looking at there so there you have it Since this thing seems to be evening out I figured we'd go a couple more seconds but 1.25 pounds <laughs>